Hello, and welcome to GBRI's course titled Lead for Starters, a Contractor's Guide. This course is designed by our team at GBRI for construction professionals to build a strong foundation in sustainability as it pertains to the construction world. This is also a prerequisite for our enhanced course, Lead Construction Management, where we dive deep into many of the practical things a contractor needs to know while working on a lead project. We hope you'll find this course both educational and enlightening. The course objectives for today's course are shown on the screen. We'll understand the fundamentals of sustainability, explain the benefits of green buildings, identify the differences between traditional versus green building process, analyze lead rating systems and how it addresses environmental issues, Describe the concepts of each LEED credit category, identify the key components of the LEED certification process, and finally get a basic understanding of construction professionals' role in LEED projects. This course is divided into three main sections. First, we'll discuss and introduce the fundamental concepts of sustainability, green buildings, the United States Green Building Council, or USGBC, and the LEED rating system. In Section 2, we'll look at the LEED rating system in detail, changes in V4 as compared to 2009, and its growth across the globe and break down the LEED certification process. Next, in Section 3, we'll learn about the specifics for each of the LEED categories, the environmental issues they address, and provide some real-world case studies. In addition, we'll also explore LEED V4 credits, and the ones that relate to construction or contractor responsible credits. In the traditional planning and design process, building systems are viewed as separate elements. Site, structure, system, and design decisions are each based on a construction budget and or schedule considerations. Now, as a GC, you understand how this works. Changes to a design in order to meet a certain budget or to follow an accelerated schedule do not take into account the final performance of the completed building. After all, how many times have you gone back to buildings that you've constructed and seen if they've been performing? Chances are, you've never done that. The traditional building process follows these steps, design, construction plans, building process, construction, commissioning and turnover, and occupancy. That's it. In traditional building process, specialists usually worked in isolation, focusing on their separate area of project expertise and interacting and working together only when absolutely needed. So, how does this affect us, contractors? Well, let's use insulation as an example. Traditionally, enough insulation would be installed to meet code and at the lowest cost. The HVAC system would be designed to cool the building based on the area without regard to what insulation was being used or which insulation would be more effective for the HVAC system that was chosen. The contractor worked in isolation, just concentrating on their own concerns, not the overall building or the needs of the occupants or any relation to the environment. This is a typical project life cycle for a design, bid, build project. As you can see, it is a hierarchical process. The owner starts the ball rolling, hires the designers, the architect and engineer, sends it out to bid, hires the GC who then builds it. The designer comes in at the end to check it all out and then the keys are turned over to the owner. The design build project is only slightly different. Teamwork is almost an accident in the traditional project life cycle. It happens, of course, especially if all the stakeholders have worked together before, but teamwork is not a formal part of the process. How does this affect contractors? Well, in several ways. As you know, you, the CM or GC, have a great deal of risk you have to manage in a project, and a large part of that risk is litigation potential from project team members. When there is a formalized team process, as in green building, this 
risk is minimized. Sometimes it even disappears altogether. Also, there can be profit-killing antagonism between project team members. If each team is diligently protecting their own bottom lines, each and every suggestion, every change, every development along the way can cause friction. This is clearly not good for the owner or the project, and it's also bad for you. Green building keeps the building front and center of the project team, which makes the owner happy and keeps your profit levels at predictable levels. In essence, when the focus is on the project, you have more control. And let's not forget the morale aspect. You are in business to create more than one building, and you need to make sure your employees feel engaged in their work with a sense of pride. This is hard to maintain if everyone is feeling ground down by project team adversity. What are some ways you can think of that a solid project team framework can help you in your work? In contrast, green buildings follow an integrated project delivery process that integrates all stakeholders, systems, building structures, and practices. This way, the talents and insights of all participants are collaboratively harnessed into an integrated design team. The benefits of this process are optimization of project results, increased value to the owner, reductions in waste, and maximum efficiency throughout all phases of design, fabrication, and construction. Additionally, this process ensures lower operating costs throughout the lifespan of the building because each system is optimally sized since team members worked together and communicated throughout the design and construction. The project phases of Integrated Project Delivery Process, or IPD, are very similar to conventional design, but have the additional stages of pre-design and recommissioning. The stages are pre-design, design, construction plans, bidding process, construction, commissioning the building. Now that we went over the performance of green buildings as construction professionals, you may wonder how much does lead actually cost? Because frankly, you know, it always comes down to the dollars, doesn't it? There is a lot of uninformed talk about the cost of lead, that it's too prohibitive, etc. Well, it is true that there are costs associated with pursuing lead certification, but they aren't very much. This slide shows the average cost differential for the certification levels. Stuart D. Kaplow states in his June 2010 white paper, there is no statistically significant difference in construction cost between lead and non-lead buildings. And the lead building will have energy savings on As contractors, I'm sure you wonder, what are some of the other costs associated with LEED? These are the cost categories that are LEED add-ons, that is, add-ons to a traditional building budget. Some items, such as commissioning, energy modeling, construction management, could be incurred even without pursuing LEED certification. Dockside Green is an excellent case study that sums up everything we have talked about so far. Triple bottom line, sustainability, an integrative design approach, and LEED. The project adopted an integrated design approach, which included all stakeholders and consultants, including some unusual ones. The project uses strategies such as on-site biomass heat generation, on-site stormwater and sewage treatment, strict water conservation measures, and provisions for alternative transportation. The result is an exceptionally energy efficient facility with very low greenhouse gas emissions. These features helped make Dockside Green Community achieve a LEED Platinum certification while creating new jobs, supporting local supplies, and providing educational opportunities. 
After the RFP has been developed and a contractor has bid on and won the design-build construction contract, the design phase begins. In this phase, a lead responsibility matrix should be developed so that all project stakeholders are aware of what tasks need to be accomplished in a lead project, when they need to be accomplished by, and who the person responsible and accountable for accomplishing that task is. The design phase should be an integrated process where all stakeholders work together to design the building from a holistic life cycle approach instead of the traditional method where each function designs their own portion of the building without taking into consideration how their particular system affects other building systems as a whole. Here, the contractor develops an overall project budget, which will be used for several calculations for various lead credits. The lead checklist will be updated throughout the design process as the design is refined. As in all construction projects, there will be multiple regular progress meetings as well as quality assurance and quality control to ensure the project stays on schedule and budget to meet the OPR and lead level of certification. Just days after the official launch of LEED version 4 at Green Build 2013, two projects have already achieved certification. The Hallworth Organic Showroom in Beijing, certified gold under LEED for Commercial Interiors, and 1800 K Street in Washington, D.C., certified silver under LEED for Existing Buildings, Operations, and Maintenance. Housed in the LEED Platinum Parkview Green, the Hallworth Beijing showroom features 60% reclaimed materials according to the furniture manufacturer. LEDs help the project decrease modeled energy consumption by 59%, and on-site gray water treatment helped reduce modeled potable water consumption 53% compared with code baselines. The project earned 71 out of 110 possible points. With an Energy Star rating of 81, means it performs better on energy and water measures than 81% of similar buildings within the United States. Inside, Haworth has created The Club, an organic workspace concept offering dynamic co-working and lounge spaces available to tenants, hotel guests, and the surrounding community. The core design element is a concept of flexibility. Everything can be easily rearranged to meet day-to-day -day needs. Conceived as a high school science building dedicated to the study of alternative energy, the new energy lab at the Hawaii Preparatory Academy functions as a zero net energy, fully sustainable building. The project's fundamental goal is that of educating the next generation of students in the understanding of the environmentally conscious sustainable living systems. The project targeted and subsequently achieved LEED Platinum and Living Building Challenge certification. Completed in January 2010, the Energy Lab today strives as a living laboratory, furthering its I hope you enjoyed the course. As I mentioned in the beginning, this course was prepared as a prerequisite or foundation to our advanced LEED Construction Management course. Our LEED Construction Management Hands-On Training Module is an intermediate to advanced level online training class designed for construction managers, contractors, and builders field engineers, superintendents, site engineers, and other construction professionals to assist them to successfully incorporate sustainability and green building guidelines, principles, and practices into their construction projects. This course is uniquely designed in the context of a real LEED version 3 and version 4 project. Attendees will be able to join the projects via LEED online as well.